What's up, people? My name is Jeffrey Kaminsky, and today I'm going to tell you how you can train your balance. Because in an athletic sport like wrestling, having crappy balance means you're going to give up easy points, you're not going to be able to reduce as much force and be as powerful as you possibly could be, and you're increasing your risk of injury. And you might be saying to yourself, what do you mean my balance is pretty good? But I guarantee you, it's probably pretty crappy. And I say this because in the spring, when we were doing our team physicals, there was a test where you had to do a single leg balance with your eyes closed for 20 seconds, and pretty much all of my teammates failed this. These aren't just some geriatric schmucks from off the street. These are college level elite athletes. And so if you're a high school wrestler or an older dude trying to get into something like BJJ, what do you think your balance is like? But luckily today, I'm gonna to show you what you can do to train your balance. Yeah, okay, here's how you actually train your balance. The first way to do it is in the wrestling room doing sport specific work. So when you're drilling and your partner gets in your leg and brings it up to an elevated single or is trying to run the pipe, do not just fall over. Be an athlete and get some steps there and stabilize in a position you'd actually get to in a wrestling match. The second key way to do it is with indirect balance training in the weight room. This is when you pick balance intensive exercises like your split squats, your lunges, your single leg RDLs, etc. But all of that is going to pale in comparison to the balance benefits that you will gain from doing direct balance training. But before you get into any of that, here are some things you should probably consider. First, you gotta make sure that you know how to use your core to stabilize, so you're not wobbling all over the place and letting your posture get bent and broken in the first place. The second prerequisite is to deal with any kind of injuries or mobility restrictions. Let's say I messed up my ankle and I sprained it. All the ligaments that I hurt are getting stretched beyond their natural resting length and what my body is used to moving with. And to compensate for that joint laxity, all the muscles around it are artificially locking up, getting swollen and inflamed. That means my body is not gonna be as well at moving that joint anymore because it's not what it's used to. That means I have to regress my balance training a lot after I get injured. Similarly, if I have crappy mobility or any kind of restrictions in any of the joints in my lower body, the same thing is really going to apply. Let's say if on a single leg jump, I have to get down this low in order to stabilize, but if I have tight ankles, I can only get up to here and I'm gonna land on my face, which is not good. So you have to make sure that you have enough mobility and range of motion in your ankles and hips in order to actually train your balance. So when we get into our direct balance training, our main exercise is going to be the single leg balance. And this is because it is infinitely scalable. From the worst athlete to the best athlete on earth, there is a single leg balance modification or variation that will challenge them appropriately. We're going to start though with a regular single leg balance on a flat steady surface with our eyes focused on one singular point. This is the easiest single leg balance variation you can possibly do, unless you're literally crippled. Now hopefully you can do this easy variation all day until you get bored. That's when it's time to scale up. And when you do scale up, you're probably gonna notice some things. You're not gonna do it as long as you did on that easier variation. You wanna make sure this is an appropriate jump though. If you're falling off every one or two seconds, that's way too big of a jump. And if you can do it all day, that's too easy of a jump. You need to find that nice little Goldilocks zone where you start and you can barely do 10 seconds and work our way up to 30 seconds before we move on to another variation. You might also find that one of your legs is a lot worse at balancing than the other. Maybe this is because of a previous injury or the muscles are weaker on that side. Or maybe you're just built different. I don't really care. What I do care about is making sure we get that lagging side up to par before we make that jump to our new variation. When it comes to scaling a single leg balance up, there's a lot of things we can change. Obviously, we can change the amount of time we're balancing for. We can change the number of sets that we're doing. Maybe on the first set, it's pretty easy. By the third or fourth set, we're really struggling and we're getting the kind of stimulus that we need to actually improve our balance. You can also mess around with your eyesight. If you close your eyes when you're on one leg, I guarantee you're gonna wobble more because your body has less sensory input. The same thing is true if instead of looking at one singular point, you look all over the place to really challenge your inner ear and all of your balance in your body. You can also do the more fun thing 
by changing the surface that you're balancing on. When we start with an easier variation, we're going to be on a more steady, flat, solid surface. But as we progress, we're going to gradually increase the instability of that surface. So maybe we stand on a foam block. That block is going to squish and we have to constantly readjust our bodies to try and balance. Maybe we cut a foam roller in half into a little half moon, stand on that and make sure we can balance when it's wobbling. We can try walking on a PVC pipe or a foam roller. Or it could be like every other personal trainer and make you stand on a BOSU ball. Flip that BOSU ball upside down, do a reverse BOSU ball, single leg balance. Or you could try this extra fun variation of a slam ball. And notice I said slam ball. You know those squishy balls that have a little bit of give on them and aren't rock solid or a giant exercise ball? If you're wondering why, That's why. So yeah, you basically just pick a variation of a single leg balance that's challenging for you and train it until you can get 30 seconds on each side. Then you change something about it so it's challenging again and you keep that cycle going on and on and on. Eventually you can start adding in single leg plyometric work. These are your single leg vertical jumps, your single leg broad jumps, single leg lateral jumps, single leg box jumps, single leg depth jumps, all these fun crazy things where you are in a balance intensive position absorbing and generating force rapidly and stabilizing at the exact same time. So make sure that you are sticking the landing on these and aren't just skidding off. As far as where to put these amazing balance exercises into your training routine, here are a few ideas. Maybe instead of scrolling on TikTok and getting your brain indoctrinated with propaganda, you can do some active recovery by getting some single leg balance work in between sets. or to prime your heavy squats or deadlifts, you can do some single leg vertical jumps right before them. Or you could just eat your vegetables and wait till the end of the training session to do your single leg work. That way you could do an, a would be easier variation and it would actually be challenging because you're fatigued. It's really up to you and what you're actually gonna do. One last little tidbit of balance training advice is to learn how to fall safely. This is why you do your forward rolls, backward rolls, shoulder rolls, mat slaps, all that tumbling stuff in your wrestling warm up so that you don't get hurt. Because you're gonna get taken down eventually, whether that's by Dan Gable or a patch of ice. And with that, I'll see y'all later.